see me now. No, 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 turn your head round, just move the bloody camera. <laughs> Is this all right? Can you see me? <laughs> Cheeky kid. Good morning. Good morning. Day three, and Pops is already entertaining us. He's he's going to be video cameraman today. He's an awesome photographer, but a videographer he is not. <laughs> well, I'm still learning. So, um. Day three, all about otters. Uh, we're going to go to several locations where we photograph otters and hopefully we'll get some opportunity to get some, some nice photographs of otters and, some, uh, and more than anything, some encounters with otters. We had uh, an encounter with two otters yesterday and got nothing really in the way of photographs, but actually, in terms of uh, an encounter, it was a fantastic encounter and we were with it for quite a while. It just didn't present itself in a way that was, was photogenic really, did it? It didn't, but it was fascinating watching it hunt the, the, and the different way it dived. Yeah, yeah, and I think, I think that's one of the things that I was, I was trying to show Pops yesterday was that you can tell from the dive in particular whether an otter is um, moving, whether it's transitioning to a new area or whether it's hunting. Uh, and it all it's all about the, the depth of the dive. Um, and when they dive deep, they, they really go down and you see the tail flick right up. When they dive in to, to, make, to move along the coastline, it's a much shallower dive and the tail doesn't flip up anywhere near as much. Um, and it comes back to that point I was saying before about observation, you know, looking and watching an otter rather than rushing down to the shoreline to try and photograph it, you can very quickly work out the directions that it's going to go and then put yourself in the place that is going to give you the best opportunity. Yeah, but what I also saw for the first time, and you've mentioned this to me on a few occasions, when they dive deep, when they, re when they surface, they virtually breach the water. Yeah, they, really they come up with such force. They really pop out, don't they? Oh, it was awesome to watch. So, fingers crossed, we'll see you later on with some otters. Yeah. I'm not really a bad video here, am I? Where do I turn it off? You press the button on the right. button. So Pops and me have found our first otter. As you can hear from the traffic behind us, we're not far from the road. Uh, I would say that this is um, a large dog otter. He's just working his way along the coastline. I thought we'd gone way ahead of him and actually he's powered past this little headland that we're at now. Um, so we're going to keep moving our way further down the coast uh, and just track him from a distance and then hopefully be in a place further down the coast in the direction that he's heading when he comes out. That's the game we play. As quick as that otter encounter started, it ended. Uh, we've just lost it. Really, a, a big bank of very heavy rain came in. Um, I ran back to get the car and he just gave Pops a slip, didn't he, Pops? He certainly did. Um, I mean, it's difficult to see out there because it's it, it was stair rods coming down. Uh, we will continue to search for otters, but we've already found one, so there's one to the chalkboard. And the ring came tumbling <laughs> down. So we've actually found a uh, white-tailed eagle nest. Um, it's really, really well hidden, and I'm not going to disclose the location of it at all. Um, but what's remarkable about it is there's still a chick on the nest. I, I, I would say, looking at it, you know, it's it's very well developed. It's probably due for fledging at any time. It's possibly even fledged and is returning to the nest just because of the poor weather. Because the nest is beautifully tucked into the trees. There's a small clearing where you can see the nest um, it, it is in amongst, amongst the branches. And then the, the tree above it opens out a little bit and probably acts a little bit like a canopy, an umbrella, uh, so to speak and the chick sat on it and you can hear the chick calling out all the time. Um, I would imagine that the adults probably still coming back and feeding it pops, isn't it? Um, I would possibly. have thought so with the way it was calling out. Or, or possibly they've stopped feeding it to encourage it to, to fledge. Because mm. um, I thought most of them would have fledged by now. When we were photographing the white-tailed eagles yesterday, they had two juveniles and we saw both juveniles and both juveniles were on the wing, um, but they weren't hunting for themselves. So although, they were flying around, the uh, adults were still catching uh, fish and then returning them and giving them to the chicks. 
So I would imagine that this one's probably exactly the same, isn't it? I would have thought so. Still very nice to see. Oh, wow, fantastic. So Pops was struggling a little bit to find her in the, in the binoculars, um, but with his 800mm lens on, and in video mode, the crop factor is even greater than in, in photograph mode. So you can use it like a telescope. Um, and as, we're, as I was getting the camera out and, and pointing it on, so I've got a little bit of video which I'll pop up on the screen for you to see. She's stretching her wings. Um, she's fully stretched them out. I'm saying she, she might be a he. Um, and she's calling out all the time. And, and obviously, as you can see, we're out of the car now. There she goes again. <laughs> she's flapping her wings again. <laughs> So, um, and, and it's worth pointing out, we're well away from the nest, and I mean well away. This is really, really safe distance to be, to be observing her from. Um, but the rain has passed, so she's obviously drying out her wings, so she's got them outstretched wide, and she's flapping them away. It's just a wonderful thing to see, in it, Pops? Oh, it is, it is, it's beautiful. The she's flapping again, best. flapping again, look, look at yeah. that. Well earned celebratory cup of coffee. <laughs> We've had our second encounter with an otter of the day. And while we were tracking this one along the shore, we had a white tailed eagle fly over the top of us. Don't get much better than that. Certainly doesn't. I think the only thing that would have been an advantage is if the otter had have actually come out of the water. He never came out, not once. Um, and then we got to a little bit of the shoreline which was impossible to go around and so we had to to double back on ourselves and, and, and move our way forward and then once we got forward lost them gone could have could have very easily hauled out on the peninsula that we had to, to work yeah. our way around yeah and um, so we thought we'd just come away and have a cup of coffee and shelter from the rain <laughs> because it's grim. <laughs> hey, I feel like we're not getting the look today. Uh, we've tracked that otter for Probably best part of a kilometre, I would say. And then the terrain just got that little bit worse. Uh, it, we saw it had come out onto a rock. We stayed where we were hoping that it would go back to the water because it was not in a position that we could be able to get a photograph and it vanished. And they do that, they're a bit like ghosts at times, aren't they? Oh, they are. They're one minute and gone the next. Yeah. And uh, we've seen three otters today and all three of them have done exactly the same on us. Yeah. The only time they've come to shore has been at a point where it's impossible to photograph them and then we've lost them. But hey ho, it makes... On, onwards and upwards. Exactly. <laughs> and it makes those moments where you do get, get lucky uh, all that more sweeter. I have to say, the temptation is to, you know, Try and get closer and try and get closer, but the method we're using in terms of getting ahead of the otter and lying in wait and letting it come to you is by far the best approach. And I know we're not striking lucky today, but I also know that we're causing the otter no distress whatsoever. It's at no point does it realise we're there, which I think is absolutely crucial. Yeah. Otters three, the Willis is nil today. <laughs> the moment we've been waiting for. An otter gets a fish that it can't dispatch in the water and it brings it to shore right at our feet.
<laughs> oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Get the coffee on, Pops. I don't think there's any left. Come on, there must be. I don't know, I don't think so. Well, that was probably one of the best otter encounters I've had. No, We've no. been with that otter for two hours. Um, and we've actually left it and we could have carried on with it. You know, we had no idea that we were there. And all we were doing, it was moving down the, the shoreline. We were getting ahead of it by a good 200, 300 meters, tucking in behind a rock, sitting and waiting. Sometimes it came out before it got to us and we missed it. Um, sometimes it came out just, just near us and we managed to get some shots. And there was one moment in particular which stands out where it climbed up on top of a rock to sprain and just posed on top of the rock for us, didn't it? It did. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I'm exhausted, but just to get that shot, fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. But chasing this bugger down with the rocks and uh, seaweed and all the rest of it, Yes, swine. As as Aunt Andrew called me dad, you fat rat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it's got to be done. It's the only way to do it. I mean, we've actually yeah. covered, I've just, just checked on my watch, I recorded it. We've just covered the best part of 10 kilometres there and back. Um, Fabulous. Yeah, it's been all right, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been yeah, all right. Yeah. Every time I've come with you, son, we always seem to get a moment yeah that is just eclipses everything else and and that was for me that was the moment on that rock posing for us and i think that's it i think you know sometimes people have this perception that you come to uh mull and you drive down the road and there's an otter every every half a mile and you know it's I, i've i've heard comments like you know it's handed to you on a plate but you still have to work for it here yeah there are more otters probably um in certain areas than in other areas around the country but you still have to work for it you know we spent a lot of time today you know we were out the door this morning probably at nine o'clock and we're now at what were you quarter, quarter past six quarter past six yeah. and it's only been the last two hours where we've had a, a, a decent encounters we've actually yeah. had five otters today yeah um so we've we've been in the company of five otters um four of them have just been very very difficult to uh to use this method of getting ahead of them and, and the terrain has gone against us and oh, they've vanished. Um, but this final one, just it just came right, didn't it? It certainly did, yeah. Yeah, you've got to work hard, but the rewards are well worth it. And I think that one of the best bits is we, we've done it all in beautiful sunshine, this last one. And as we've walked back, <laughs> I don't know whether you can see out the window, a huge bank of rain has followed us all the way back to the car. And we've just got back to the car before the rain started. So all in all, a success. Fantastic. Thank you, son. You're welcome. Which day are we on now today? Wednesday. Oh, I know it's Wednesday, but Sunday was day one, weren't it? Yeah. Monday day two, Tuesday day three, day so it's day four. You see, they all merge into one. So we're on day four. Um, we've had a fantastic week so far. The weather hasn't been particularly brilliant at times and today is no different. We've, we're very heavy cloud today and kind of a constant drizzle. Um, but we're out looking uh, for wildlife. We've come to a spot that I love coming to on Loch Nakiel um, for white-tailed eagles. Um, and there is just a set of trees that are reasonably close to the roadside and they do tend to roost up on the tree line and I've seen them here many times so it's just a place I like to just come to Pops is just scanning the, the tops now to see if we can see any, any action of the white-tailed eagles and then of course directly behind you you've got the lock and as you, as you know on, on, on Mull you can see otters anywhere on Mull and Loch Nakiel is no exception for that I find that one of the best ways of um, enticing otters to the camera is if you sing them a little song. <laughs> <laughs> T 
motto I like. <laughs> You've got, got to find an otter or two. You've got to find an otter or two. It works every time. <laughs> They're literally queuing up on the bank. <laughs> You find that when you've been uh, searching for otters for a while, you go utterly crazy. without doubt the best otter experience I've ever had in my life. I only hope that Pops has had the same experience. He's not sat f that far behind me but he may have been obstructed by the rock that I'm leaning on. Oh wow. Just wow. just heading up we're being eaten alive by midges um, he's just heading out now across the lock um, heading really towards the opposite direction now I would say that that is for me personally the Not for me yeah well you I, I th thought you said it wasn't the best that yesterday's was better photographic wise it was probably better yesterday but today it has an actual close encounter with with an otter was the best experience I've ever had and testimony to the the method that i keep plugging on here we got ahead of the otter we got ourselves in position and today everything aligned he came out with the fish he ate the fish he sprinted on a rock right in front of us and then he curled up and fell asleep and i would say when he fell asleep he was within seven meters from from my feet and he slept on the rocks for 20 minutes for 20 minutes i had to lie absolutely frozen still whilst being eaten by midges um and then he got up went to the toilet again and then carried on with his business and he's now away none the wiser that we we were there and it was just magical wasn't it it was it was without a doubt awesome experience I've lost him now. Oh no, he's still he's out there. there he is. So day four and the last day that we have a, we've had on Mull. What, what's your thoughts, Pops? It's just been an absolutely awesome trip. Uh, I have enjoyed 
every single minute of it. Um, never fails to uh, be such a, an awesome, amazing place for wildlife, does it? No, it is. It's incredible. It, it, Mull really is incredible. I think if, if, if it's a place you've never been, and you are into wildlife, or you're even better, even if you're into wildlife photography, you need to come to Mull. It is just an absolute bucket list of a place, isn't it? It certainly is, without a doubt. So what's your highlights of the week? There's <laughs> so many, the whole of the trip. I guess, I mean, it, you know, the, the bull charters uh, photographing the, uh, the sea eagles is always the highlight of the trip. But yesterday afternoon and this afternoon with those otters was just absolutely sublime. Yeah, you think, you think you've kind of peaked and then they go and do something else, don't they? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, yesterday um, photographing the otter on top of that rock I thought was the pinnacle I thought that was the ultimate shot I was going to get but then this afternoon blow me coming out the water with a scorpion fish in its mouth and dispatching it was just breathtaking absolutely breathtaking and it was only what but 10 yards away from us yeah, yeah. 10 yards 10 yards I would say and it hadn't got a clue we were there no mind you we was being bitten to death by mozzies, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, you take the rough with the smooth, I guess. Scottish Ridge. Yeah. They are very bitey. Very, very bitey. <laughs> yeah. They even crawled up my trouser leg and bit all my calves. Little swines. <laughs> yeah, I think I think one of the things I think it puts people off coming to Scotland for, because of the. Um, the midge and people talk about the midge and I, I always say you know when we came in May I'd say that the, the midges were at their absolute worst then and as long as you've got mosquito nets on and smidge insect repellent yeah you, you can tolerate it to be honest with you nothing stops them biting completely so you know you have to accept that you're gonna get a few bites um, but I'd rather be bitten by a hundred midges than one tick <laughs> <laughs> it's the ticks that frighten me to death. I'm not and me on. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have to inspect each other, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite entertaining. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, ticks. Ticks are something that, that do worry me. But you know, we could pick up a tick in the Pink District, so that's not yeah. something that's uh, unique to this area. Well, that brings us to the end of a fantastic trip for both Pops and me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, maybe even consider giving it a subscribe. And until next time, ta-ra.